Hey, what's going on, y'all? Jay from JS Films, and we are back in Unreal Editor for Fortnite. Now, a couple of days ago, I showed you how you can create a cinematic here using your custom mocap, right? But with that being said, in this video, I'm going to show you where you can download some free and paid motion captures for your cinematics for UEFN. So here we go in Relusion Actor Core. Go to actorcore.relusion.com. And if you go to motions right here, they have a pretty nice bad A fight mocap that we're going to be using. So if we go right here, hand to hand combat, I'm going to select that and I'm going to go view items. Now I already downloaded this, so I paid for this. And what's cool about Relusion Actor Core is you can buy the entire pack or you can buy a la carte. So what I did was I just went ahead and downloaded this one and this one and another cool thing about this is these are paired mocaps so we have an attacker and a victim now with that being said if you don't want to spend money they do have some free ones if you click on this free right here in the bottom left corner they have some pretty cool ones in here they have a catwalk they have some pistol movements which is kind of cool we're gonna less like some john wickety wickety right there with that being said i'm gonna go back to the download motion and that's gonna load it up and i'm gonna retarget it to this male robot next i'll click on next and then I'm going to choose Unreal Engine. I'm going to say 60 frames per second. And I'm only going to download the motion. I'm not going to download the actual skeleton, the robot itself. Now, what's cool about this is this is rigged to an Unreal Engine for mannequin compatible system. Meaning you can buy assets in the marketplace that is retargeted to Unreal Engine for mannequin. And you're going to be able to use these animations to that. So I'm going to click on download. And like I said, I already downloaded it. So I don't want to take too much space. It's already in my hard drive. So we have the attack, somersault, and a knockout, right? So I'm going to close this right now. So let's go ahead and go to the editor. I'm going to create a new folder right here. New folder. And I'm just going to name this soldier. And again, I have this soldier that I bought from the Epic Marketplace, SK Body 1. This is one of my favorite soldiers to use, bad guy ones. I'm going to import the skeletal mesh. I'm going to import the mesh. And I'm going to put use T0 as reference post. And then additionally, I'm going to make sure that animation is checked on. Exported time, custom sample rate 60, and I'm going to say import all. This is now going to import our character. And next, what we'll do is import some textures. So I'm going to hold shift and drag everything. And let's work on some textures here. We have the first material, which is the body one. So I'll delete this. Again, if you see my previous video, it's the same exact thing. Look at albedo, albedo, and body, metallic, normals. So we have four of this right here. Again, we'll plug it in the base color. That's probably my favorite part. This is plugging stuff in. It's pretty cool. Ambient occlusion, we have a normal, which is the blue one, and I'm pretty sure this is going to be metallic. All right, so metallic up here. Now, again, just because you're missing some textures doesn't mean that it's going to look bad. Just make sure you have at least the albedo or the color and normal for that model to look good. Okay, so that's good to go. I'll minimize that. I'll go back to the head now and do the same exact thing. All right, drag and drop it there. Now, this is, again, the color. And this is the ambient occlusion, AO. This is emissive. Okay, so it's got a little bit of emissive color in the head. On the head, I mean. And this is going to be your metallic once again. Now, looking at the metallic texture right here, I believe that the metallic is also the roughness. So I'm going to go right here. And the alpha will go to roughness and apply. So you see it's going to be a little bit shinier. Now I'll drag and drop our soldier and that is looking pretty good. Oh, look at that. That looks amazing. So here we go. We have our character right here and we're going to grab our Robro. Again, if you've seen our tutorial earlier, we have a Robro right here and he's going to be fighting this soldier right here. Okay, awesome. They're looking pretty good now. They're ready to fight. All right, so I'm going to go back to my folder. And we're going to grab the knockout because he's the bad guy. I want him to get knocked out. And in here, you're going to see that the skeleton, we're going to select the skeleton for the bad guy because that's where we want this animation to be retargeted to. So I'll import that. It's going to do calculations, import all the keys. That's cool. I'm going to go ahead and zero this out. And I'm going to double click this now. And you're going to see that that animation is now there. I'll minimize this. And I almost forgot, make sure that if you go here in the skeleton, just make sure that the retargeting options are set to spine to skeleton. Just make sure that from spine down is set the skeleton. That's a really, really good practice. You have to get used to that because you're going to have to do that a lot, right? Because if you don't, sometimes you're going to get some janky, janky animations. So pelvis and root should be set to animation. Everything else should be set to skeleton. So I'll close this now. He's ready to go. Now we're going to go with the avatar. I'm going to click on the avatar and let's take a look at where he's at. 
is actually right here in name avatar and we're going to be importing the somersault flip now to my avatar minimize and now i'm going to select the js films mannequin skeleton now this is the same exact character that we used in a previous tutorial and again if you haven't seen that check out the link in the description below all right so we have that everything exported time everything is good i'm going to import that all right so here we go i'm going to double click that somersault and let's see how oh my goodness oh what what look at that i mean honestly though hindsight 2020 i could have mocap that myself but, you know, it's, it's whatever. All right, so next what we're going to do is go back to my root folder and we're going to create a new sequence, right? So we already have one in here, but that was from the previous tutorial. I'm going to right click, cinematics, level sequence, and I'm going to type this fight. All right, so I'll double click that sequence. It's going to open up our timeline. I'm going to drag our soldier in there, SK body one, and then also our mannequin right here. And then for my character, the hero, I'm going to go to B1 attack back somersault flip. I'll scoot that over to the left. And I'm just going to go to 240 because it looks like that's how long the animation is. There you go. Oh, man, that is looking bad to the bones. Bad, b bad, bro. All right, next we're going to go to the soldier. And again, I'm going to go to the knockout because he's going to get beat. All right, so we have some weapons here. What I'll do is I will just delete this item spawner for now. I'm actually going to publish this map right here that you're looking at whenever... I can. It's ready to go. It's pretty much going to be a 1v1. Super cool. So I'm going to go ahead and move this here so that we're in position. I'm going to click that and press E to rotate. And we're just making sure that it makes sense. All right. So he punches. Bad guy punches me. Pow. Get close right there. Right there, right? Here we go. So bad guy punches me. Pow. All right, let's see that kick right there. So again, this is one of the benefits about downloading paired animations is that they're moving well. They are actually mocapped together at the same time. So I can actually like rotate it like that. I mean, honestly, my avatar can just go ahead and kick him in the nuts right now. I mean, that would have been game over, but we're going to keep playing. So, whoop. oh man, he did kick him in the freaking stomach. And here goes that epic somersault right here. Bow. And just like that, what an epic scene. So let's play back, play that back real time. Wow. 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 How freaking cool was that? And we're not going to stop there. I'm going to go to track, time dilation track, and I'm going to set that to one is okay for now. So this is going to play real time. And then right before he jumps, pow. I'm going to put a keyframe right there. And then I'm going to put another keyframe right there. And I'll put another keyframe right there. And I'm going to go to this keyframe. Probably right here I'm going to keyframe again. Because I'm going to set this to 0 0.5. I'm going to half that time. Oof. All right. And this is still going to be 0 0.5. So we're slowing down time now. I want it a little bit slower. Maybe a little bit more slower. Maybe 0.3. Bam. And then we'll do like 0.3. Bam. Bow. Bow. Then it goes back real time. Bro. Bro. If you haven't done so, you might you might as well subscribe to this channel because ain't no way. Bow. Actually, I want it to slow down even more. So again, I'm just being I'm just being like really picky right now. Yeah, that's not, that looks better. Bow. Whew. Yeah, all right. The action is good. Now we're going to take care of the camera. So I'm going to create the camera right here. And this kind of looks like a cool view right here. I'm going to click this camera so that we're actually selecting that camera. All right, so here's our camera. I'm going to drive it. And we're going to have this wide action right here. And I'm going to go to the focus assist. I'm going to change the focus so that we're actually focused. And additionally, let me get some depth of field in there. So I'm going to increase the focal length to like 50. Just like so. And again, I'm going to adjust that. And press play. And what I'm going to do there is I'm going to create another camera. Because maybe for this shot, maybe I want to change it to like an 
like a like an aerial shot like that. I don't know. I'm I'm just messing around here. And let me change this to two so it's not too confusing. And about, let's see, right here, I'm probably going to swap this to the other camera. No, not that one. I'm going to swap it to this camera. All right, so now that we have that, when it cuts, it's going to go up like that. And then when it gets back from that, and then what I'll do is I'll go back to cinema camera too so we have that final post. So it goes... Wow. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> I'm not making weird noises. Now, what we're going to do next is obviously implement this so that it makes sense. So how it's going to go is... I want this to play whenever I hit a trigger, whenever I'm moving around. Think about it like a cinematics, like a boss fight or something. You're watching two people fight, I don't know, on top of a robot or something. Really, really epic. Uh, so here we go. I'm going to go down right here. All right, so here we go. We're back in the viewport, and we're going to create a couple of devices here. So I'm going to go to Fortnite, and I'm going to type in Cinema. Cinematic Secret Cert is going to be up here. And in the sequence, on the right side, I'm going to select, I'm going to select Fight, which is the one that we created just now. And then I'm going to create a trigger. It's going to be a trigger actor right here. What I'm going to do is go back to the cinema camera actor. And the play function, I'm going to press an element right here, add an element. And then what I'm going to do right here is type in trigger. So again, what that's going to do is once I step on this trigger, it's going to play this animation that we have. I'm going to hide the VFX and the sound effects. I don't want that. Additionally, I'm going to hide that actual mesh because it looks kind of tacky. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is I want this character to share the same exact skeleton as this character so that we can get this idle animation from my character, all right? So as you can see, he's in an idle pose, he's not. I don't want him in that pose when we're starting the game because that's kind of tacky. So I'm going to click this character, I'm going to search, and I'm going to double click the body. And then what I'm going to do is on the top right corner, I'm going to change it to the skeleton view right here. Then next, I'll go to Windows, Asset Details. I'm going to click plus to add an element. And then we'll select JS Film Skeleton. Next, I'm going to click on this little browser icon right here. And that's going to take me to my other character. Same thing. Go to the Skeleton System. Go to Windows. Asset Details. And do the same exact thing. But this time, select the actual bad guy. So now we're saying Unreal Engine, these two characters are actually compatible. Which they are. Because they are rigged the same exact way. They're compatible with UE4 Mannequin Skeleton. Minimize this. Save. da 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 da, -da. Minimize, and now if I go to the bad guy skeleton and I go to animation to play, you're now going to see we have an idle fort right there. So now they are both in the idle position. I have the trigger right here and I have the cinematic sequencer and whenever we step on, so that means whenever we step on the trigger, it's going to play. So we have the trigger right here and oh, actually right here, none. We're going to set that to on triggered. All right, so I forgot about that. Save that. So before we actually push the changes, I'm going to take a look at this sequencer right now through the camera. Because we did move this character right here. And yeah, so it moved it, so he kind of disappeared. So what I'm going to do is go to zero right here. And then I'll go back to my viewport right now. What I'll do is I'll select this enemy. I'm going to set a transform. I'm going to key this right here. It's going to create a keyframe. And, and I'm pretty much going to scoot him back to where he was earlier. I'll just create another layout here so we have two. I'll switch this to perspective. And then I'll go to cinematic viewport. And I'll go to this camera. So now, I can select this character and I have that keyframed. I'm going to scoot them back into the frame and then keyframe them again. And let's see if that makes sense. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so that looks a lot better. And what's cool about this is, once we go out the sequence, it's alright. He's still gonna be where I need him to be. He's not really on top of this character right here. He's only going to move once this starts, the actual sequencer starts. So, that being said, we can save this now, and I can say push changes, and this is going to again upload it, and it's gonna open up a Fortnite EXE. Alright, so here we are back in our game. I'll start the game now. Okay, and there you go. They're kind of chilling there. And now if I step on this, there you go. Pretty cool. Now as you can see, the time dilation was kind of bugging out, but hopefully they'll fix that. But that is pretty much how you can make a pretty cool cinematics in here 
in UEFN in Fortnite Creative 2.0. I mean, just think about it. That could be just like a boss fight battle. Or, and again, maybe like a karate or boxing match that you have in your little metaverse that you're creating. I mean, the potential of this thing is out of this world. It is unreal. Pun intended. That being said, if you want to learn more about Fortnite Creative 2.0, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel because I don't even know if people are watching this. I'm just hoping they are. Peace out.